day. It's been an unusual practice. Unusual. Just felt different weather. We've had a lot of weather change. Warmer and warmer each day. So I don't even know if practice even helped any. I can't judge the, the day by you know by the practice. So I'm excited about the uh, getting out there. I mean, you know, I've had bad practices before and it turned into good tournaments. So that's what we're hoping for today. Number stop number two of the Tiger Warehouse Pro Circuit. We're on the on the way to the ramp. We get there. I've got a. A, uh, Marshall on the boat with me today, so uh, get there, meet up with him, get the boat in the water, get ready to go. Boat number 39, we're doing it at 3.30, hopefully we can put, a, put five big ones in the Phoenix live well. So, we'll uh, see how the day ends. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my head. tough ride home that's a you know we finished up 118th in the second stop of the tackle warehouse pro circuit there at smith lake this week um uh, man it's, it's definitely not the the finish we wanted um you know i talked about it last event you know we, we you know recovered the last event and didn't have a bomb but we kind of went backwards on this event and so uh, we got a lot of ground to make up um in the next few events to make that championship we're going to give it all give it all we got and um you know put our work in um study figure out what we need to do over there at lake murray and try to have a uh, a better event there uh speaking of the phoenix i you know i i can't say enough about the phoenix you know we didn't catch many fish but smith lake is a narrow lake and uh you know, at blast off, there's a lot of boats running down that narrow lake, and it, it gets pretty choppy. Um, but you know, the Phoenix handled it super well. Um, I'm say glad I was in a, in a Phoenix this week, um, and outrun a lot of boats this week too. So, um, you know, day one of the tournament, I had two fish that weighed three pounds five ounces. Um, you know. I, in practice, I just never, I never figured out really the deal to catch those better than average fish. I, you know, I caught one or two of them a day in practice, but never really figured out the deal. I was kind of hoping with the warming weather that um, the bite would pick up. You know, there was a lot of the, those big spotted bass out on those points, and I knew a lot of the guys were going to fish for them and, and were going to catch them. And they were they were big. I mean, when you caught one out of those points, they were three three and a half four pound spots you know um and i really thought that was the way because the largemouth hadn't really hadn't really pulled up yet so i really thought that the spotted bass was going to be the way to go and man i just couldn't like the first day of the tournament i just you know i couldn't get i couldn't get them to bite out there you know there was a lot of guys jumping around on those points and i don't know if the pressure had something to do with it or or what but you know, uh, I caught a lot of fish the first day of the tournament. Just, I was only a able to manage two of the 15 plus inches um, that first day. Um, you know, I, I s forward facing sonar played a huge role in this tournament. 
And when, when it ends, the largemouth may win this event, John Cox may win this event or whatever, but a lot of the guys in the top is utilizing the forward-facing sonar. Um, and it was a huge player for me. I mean, that's what I did. I got out on those points and and around those docks and looked for those fish. And and when when you could see, it was it was hard to get one. If you just saw one or two on those points, it was hard to get them to bite. And, but um, if you saw like five or six or seven of those fish in a school, you could get usually get one of them to bite. Um, so it, it did play a huge role. But one thing I learned about that forward-facing sonar this week was you can get, get caught up spent wasting a lot of time in a tournament day looking at that sonar. Um, so I still have a lot to learn on, on the forward-facing sonar and, and how to best utilize it and save time during a tournament day. Um, so that's kind of what I did the first day is got out there on those points. Like I said, managed two fish, called caught a lot of fish you'll see in the video I, I caught a lot of fish just a lot of short and I was really hoping the second day with the warming weather that you know a lot more fish would pull up be more active and um, I could get them to bite um, and you know I pulled up on my first or second place the second morning and um, man those fish were blowing up on shad and there was another competitor there within I don't know 100 yards of me and I caught fish after fish after fish and no keepers and, and the competitor that was out beside me, um, he was catching the keepers, you know. Um, it's just one of those things, I don't know why that happened, but um, you know, it just, the way this tournament rolled. Um, the second day I was, I managed three keepers for almost seven pounds, which helped me move up in the, in the standings, which I saved a few points that way. Um, but you know this this game's about learning and and learning to do things differently than what i'm accustomed have been accustomed to throughout the years fishing one day events or or um you know maybe two day events or something so i'm still learning and i hope that you know i hope that never never changes uh, i hope i'm always continuing to learn and how to think, do things different maturing as a as an angler and um, getting better with that um the main things I've done this week was, you know, I threw on those points was throw a shaky head, and um, I threw it on a, uh, you know, uh, look, Mega Bass Levante seven foot shaky head rod, three sixteenths ounce shaky head, uh, fifteen pound braided line, and a uh, a um, ten pound cigar um, leader, you know, about a six foot leader um that was kind of my shaky head setup just threw a zoom finesse worm on it um if i moved up to a three quarter i mean uh, to a quarter ounce shaky head i threw the uh mega bass p5 destroyer p5 wind buster same thing 10 pound braid with uh the 10 pound uh cigar leader on there uh, the main deal was though the little little swim bait and uh this is just a kai tech i caught some on a um, mega bass spark shed as well this is just a kai tech three point i think it's a 3.3 .3. i threw it on a uh a quarter ounce lead head and also uh if the fish were a little bit shallower on those points i threw a eighth ounce Okashira head from Mega Bass. And I threw that on the Destroyer Adder Mine. It's a, like a six, 611 um, rod. Threw it on a, a Seaguar braid line with a, a 10 pound test leader. I mean, that's what I caught a lot of fish. I even caught a, I don't know, somewhere between a 25 and 30 pound stripe on that setup. So you don't have to have a big line to land big fish. I proved that. We'll put that in the video and show you guys. Um, I also uh, caught a few fish on the, on the jerk bait, and I threw that on the, the Destroyer 110 Special from Mega Bass, just a Cronart, uh, Shimano Cronart MG with 10 pound 
Seaguar and Viz X line. And that's just your uh, Meg Bass Vision 110. Um, best shirt bait made. Then I caught a few, a few fish practicing, but I just never got that really dialed in on, on quality fish. Uh, and I threw it on the Mega Bass uh, Double X Flat Side Specials. Seven foot rod, great crankbait rod. Old Shimano Corrado 200 E5 with a 10 pound cigar fluorocarbon line. That's just the Berkeley Fritz side. Um, so, you know, pretty simple setups. I know some guys are catching them on glide baits. I just, I never, I never did that. I never really tried it. I'm not like um, super good at the glide bait deal. I mean, that's, that's another area I can, you know, practice and le hopefully learn more of how to do that too. I just don't fish a lot of um, lakes where that's, you know, a big, a big deal. So, um, looking back, I, you know, as tough as practice was, I wished I would have just picked up a bait I had confidence in and got on the bank and just covered a lot of water. You know, I think like 19 pounds, a little over 19 pounds made the cut to fish today. So roughly nine and three quarter pounds a day. I just feel like if I would have done that and settled in, I could have made that weight. I think that's something else I learned is like, sometimes when you don't have a great practice, you just kind of have to pick up something you got some confidence in and go out there and, and do do what you know to do best and, and um, pick up what you can. And a lot of times that'll, you know, that'll push you along until, you know, the bite picks up or you figure something out. So I think if I had to go back again, I would pick up, you know, a jig or a shaky head or something and just get on the bank and go. I mean, it's, it's springtime and those fish, you know, there, there's numbers of fish pulling up to the bank every day. Um, and, it, and, and Smith Lake's gonna bust wide open. And it could be today, I hadn't seen the results from today, but it, it could be today or it could be tomorrow and they, they bust really big bags um, in the next couple days. But, you know, we're home and uh, it's, good. it's good to be home. Um, we got about two weeks and we got to go back to Smith for the open. Uh, hopefully the bite's gonna be better there then. Um, and then we got about I don't know, maybe about a month before we got to be at Murray. And uh, so uh, I got some studying to do on Murray. I have no clue about Murray. Uh, I don't know what it's, you know, what it's going to do. It's going to be something around, you know, springtime spawn right in there sometime. Maybe, maybe they're done spawning by then. I don't know. But hopefully go make a, day, a couple day trip up there and, and pre-practice and um, kind of look at the lay of the lake and, and, uh, maybe figure out something up there and have a better tournament next next month so but uh that's kind of how the how the two days of the tournament went you know i wish we were fishing today but you know uh, i try not to judge the reason we didn't do well just look at it see where i can improve as an angler and uh get back after it uh dust our, dust our pants off and get back up and go after it and that's what we're gonna do um uh, like I said before, our tagline this year is "Have faith and grind." And when you have a bad, when you have a bad tournament, and um, you know it's, you know you, you want to stay down, but you don't have time to stay down. You got you got to get up and get back after it. And I don't have any quit in me, so we're gonna we're gonna get back after it and uh, get ready for Murray and in the next open at Smith Lake in two weeks.